This is a presentation of deep water riser recoil analysis using Orcaflex. In this case, we've got a 3,000 meter water depth, a top tension riser. We've modeled simpler tensioners with linear springs, and we freeze the tensioner lengths at a set time after the disconnect, simulating the recoil shut-in valve closure and we switch to using winches with a constant wire length to simulate what were the tension springs. Three stages in the analysis are selected. To begin with, we have uniform conditions for 50 seconds. In this case, I've switched off waves so the ship isn't moving. The disconnect is timed to be at 50 seconds when a bottom winch is released. We simulate closing the recoil shut-in valve three seconds later and at this point we hold the tensioners effectively at constant length the remainder of the simulation using winches. We have six tensioners simulated. They begin the simulation as effectively linear stiffness spring, although we've used non-linear springs to uh, tweak their stiffnesses in different simulations. We've also got, in exactly the same place as the springs, low tension winches, which are called parallel winches here. The springs are switched off after the recoil shut in, so they take no tension. But the winch lengths, at whatever they are at that time, are held constant to simulate the response of the system. Our Orcaflex winch control is shown here. The, the disconnected riser the riser is disconnected at 50 seconds. The winch tension is held just at one kilonewton until 53 seconds, simulating three seconds between the disconnect and the recoil shut-in. The winch length is constant after 53 seconds, effectively making the tension allowance constant after the recoil shut-in. This slide shows the Orcaflex tensioner spring models. The tension at zero meters stretch that these springs provide is a thousand kilonewtons. The tension at 20 meters of stretch is 1069 kilonewtons. It's linear in this range. The springs are disconnected at the start of stage three that you can see here. And Subsequently, the winches take the tension during stage three. Now we take a look at the riser tension distribution before the bottom disconnect. It's shown in the graph here, beginning in fact at 6,232 6, kilonewtons, remaining linear down and constant down the length of the riser and dropping to the connect to the wellhead and to the heavy LMRP, which is itself 300 tons. The riser is neutrally buoyant, which is why this tension remains constant. The bottom tension at disconnect, or before disconnect, is 1338 kilonewtons, and we disconnect at t equals 50 seconds. So this is what the tension distribution looks like just before the disconnect. In this slide, we show the rise of tension distributions after disconnect in the first few seconds. So here, just before disconnect, at time is 50 seconds. Then at time 50.5 seconds, we can see the tension in this section has changed. 
At time 51 seconds, tension wave has traveled up to about here. At 51.5 seconds, the tension wave has got virtually to the top. Now we're affecting the top at 52 seconds. At 52.5 seconds, we're still affecting, well, of course we're still affecting the top. At 53 seconds, and then a big change at 53.5 seconds. Remember at 53 seconds, we're switching on the riser recoil shut-in valves and we're changing from being supported on the tensioner springs to being supported on the constant length tensioners. Here we're looking at what happens in the first few seconds after we disconnect. In this slide we can see that the tensioner winch is set to a constant length at 53 seconds. We disconnected at 50 seconds. Nothing had to change in the winch length until about 1.5 seconds after the disconnect, when the top of the riser started to move up. We then stopped the tensioners pulling and held this constant length on the winch. The riser top end, similarly, is shown in this slide. Disconnect at 50 seconds, no movement until about 51.5 seconds when the top end moves up. It doesn't overshoot much and then is held at a constant distance, just over one meter above where it started. So we closed the telescopic joint by a meter. On disconnect at 50 seconds, the bottom end of the riser rises up from 2984 to above 2981, each of these divisions being a meter. So it rises up nearly three meters and then bounces up and down. It's important that it doesn't bounce down to where it was disconnected from, otherwise it would hit the wellhead. The stretch in the riser that was held in before the disconnect allows it to reach a higher point than it would do even if the top, which we see on the right hand side here, had not risen up, in this case about one meter and held steady. The bottom end has actually risen up to a steady value which will decay to about two meters above the well head and importantly, didn't bounce down to more than just less than one meter above it on the first oscillation. What we can see here is a close-up view of the bottom end of the riser in the left-hand window and the top end of the riser with the tensions attached in the top end window. Here we can see that the replay time is stopped at 49.4 seconds. When I tell it to replay continuous or start the replay again, we'll see it playing slightly slower than real time and we'll see the wire frame drawings move. This cross white line here at the top of this blue object simulates the actual bottom where it will disconnect. There's a red stick in the middle which is the LMRP nominal length of four meters but truly this white line is the bottom of the riser. This four meters is put in just so that the LMRP can be seen in the wire line diagram. Starting the replay now so at 50 seconds, the bottom starts to rise up, but the top hasn't yet moved. The top begins to move now, rises up and stops. The bottom is still going up. It overshoots, well, it gets to a certain height and then comes back down again. Remember that this lower red piece doesn't really exist. It's just for visual effect finding the LMRP in the wireframe diagram.
Now I've changed the view from a wireframe view to a shaded graphics view. This is the bottom of the riser still, and this is the top. At time 49.2, I'll click on the Start Replay button. See at 50 seconds, we start to move up here. The top isn't yet moving. The top is now moving. The top slides up, stops. Bottom still traveling up to the peak of its travel and now reversing to come back down again. A slight distortion of the wire, sorry, but a slight distortion of this view is that this rounded bottom doesn't really exist. We'll stop the replay. So far, we've looked at the recoil analysis in still water conditions. Now we take a look at the effect of vessel heaving in waves. The riser tensioner system is intended to keep the top end of the riser in a constant tension condition and permits the vessel to go up and down with the tensioners stretching and contracting. However, once the top end is locked and the bottom end has been disconnected, the top end will go up and down with the vessel. In this side, slide we see a vessel going up and down from not quite 14 meters to a little over 12 meters sorry, negative 14 to plus 12. So each of these divisions is half a metre. Uh, so it's going up and down nearly two metres. The disconnect is at 50 seconds when the vessel is on its way up its heave curve. The recoil system is locked, the shut-in valve is closed at 53 seconds when the vessel is very close to the top of its heave motion. You see the effect is that the bottom end goes up but comes down further on the first swing downwards and has the potential to land straight back on top of the wellhead. In, in this simulation, we see that the disconnect occurs at 50 seconds, but I've shifted the vessel heave motion by changing the wave origin uh, effectively by half the wave period, which just changes one number in the Orcaflex data. The disconnect now occurs close to the bottom of the heave range, and the shut-in valve is closed nearly at the bottom of the heave range. Now on the closure, the bottom end swings up and swings back down again, as we saw in the previous slide, but doesn't come close to the wellhead because we're now oscillating up and down from the bottom of the heave curve as opposed from the top of the heave curve and coming down. We're going from the bottom of the heave curve and going up. So the bottom end does not impact the wellhead. In closure, this presentation has looked at deep water riser recoil analysis using Orcaflex, and this is a short summary. The recoil system is quite easy to model. The, the simulations run very quickly, less than a minute on my machine. It's easy to control the stage time between the disconnect and the recoil shut-in, and setting up the winches and springs in the way I've done makes that the only control that's really necessary. Then parametric variations can be very rapid with the Orcaflex spreadsheet with its scripting and built-in automation features. That concludes this presentation.